Hello and welcome to my channel. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Paul and I love analog photography. And I make lots of videos about analog photography and about cameras and what have you. And one of the questions I've been asked recently is, what is an SLR camera and how does one work? So that's what we're gonna to do today. We'll talk about an SLR camera and how it works. See you in a second. So, an SLR camera is a film camera, uh, generally 35mm, and they look like this. They've got the prism at the top here, and uh, they usually have a film winder on the side. Uh, most of them have a shutter speed dial, if they're uh, fully manual. And then on the front here you have a lens where you can set your apertures. So why is it called an SLR? Well, SLR stands for Single Lens Reflex. So, the single lens is pretty obvious because it just has a lens on the front. And with a single lens reflex camera, the point is that the lens is removable. So you can exchange the lens one for another, so you can have different types of lenses. And you can do this with the film in the camera because the blind, and there's a mirror in here, stop it from allowing um, light to get in. So we'll pop the lens back onto there. And I'll show you all how that works in a minute. So what's the reflex part? Well, the reflex part is because you look through the viewfinder here, you know, the light goes through the prism here, down onto a mirror and out through the lens. So you actually see what the lens is seeing. So with other cameras, the problem with rangefinders and etc., was parallax problems. As you look through the viewfinder, which would have been off to the side and above the lens, what you were seeing is not what the camera or the film was seeing. So with a single lens reflex camera, you see exactly what the film is going to see. So what you uh, view through the viewfinder is what your picture is going to look like. We're talking sort of 98% of what you see on the film, so it's pretty accurate. Now, the other thing you can do is that as you look through here, and you look through the viewfinder, because you're seeing what the lens sees, it allows you to focus on the subject clearly. And the way this is done is usually through a centre part on the viewfinder, where you, as you bring the focus in, it's split view and the two bits come together. But with more of that in a moment, I'll show you how that works. So you have a shutter and you have an aperture. The aperture is built into the lens and the shutter is built into the camera. The shutter speed is built into the camera. So one of the reasons I get asked is why is it a single lens reflex is because in the older days, 120 cameras, not that old, um, had two lenses, one above the other. And again, as you look through the top of the camera in that case, and you would have, the reflex would have been out through the top lens, which was connected to the uh, camera lens. So as you turned, you could focus just the same. So you were seeing virtually what the film was seeing. It was very little difference. But this is a single lens reflex because it's got the one lens, as I've already stated. And it works with the aperture and the shutter speed. And obviously, being an analog camera, a film camera, the ISO is decided by the film that you purchase. One question I get asked is, how does the camera know what the aperture setting is if it's not part of the camera? Well, if you have a look on the front here, you'll see there's this plastic ring that's on a spring, and that slides around the top there. And that connects to this little tag on the lens. I'm not showing you, am I? <laughs> Here. So it's sort of like a, a sort of cut out there. Yeah, there you go. And that pushes against the, the lens. And as you change the aperture, so that little groove moves which moves the plastic here so the camera knows what aperture you've set and particularly so the light meter when you set your shutter speed here your shutter speed dial here and it knows what the aperture is and it'll tell you if you've got a, the correct reading or not for the amount of light that the TTL meter is reading so that's quite simple isn't it so that's how that works 
through the lens metering, which means that the light that's seen by the uh, diode in here, the, um, the light meter, is exactly what the film is going to see. And as that moves around and it changes, so the light meter moves around and adjusts the light meter. So most of these cameras, like this, when you look through the viewfinder, you'll see that you'll have the shutter speed needle, which will show you, or it might be a plus and a minus. There's lots of different ways of doing it, but it will show you if you've got the correct exposure. Of course, you can ignore it because it's a manual camera and you can expose however you wish. So how does it actually work? So it works because inside here you have the mirror. And quite simply, when you press the shutter, as you see, the mirror flies up, the uh, shutter opens and shuts, the mirror comes back down again. All happens in, because it's, I've got it on one second, it takes one second. So if I do it on one two hundredth of a second, see how fast it is? If I go to, this camera does four thousandths of a second, almost instant. So how does that work exactly? Well, you might think that a shutter works like an iris. And an iris would be what you see on your diaphragm, on your lens. So the aperture, people think, is like a, a diaphragm. There you are. So you might believe, and a lot of people do, that when the shutter is fired, the diaphragm opens, and then closes, opens and closes, opens and closes. But of course, if, if the shutter worked like that, the sensor would get more light for a longer than the outside. So the shutter can't work like that. So with a SLR camera, it has what's called a blind. So what makes it fantastic is, especially the really old ones, because it was mechanical, it was uh, clockwork. The modern ones are more electronic. For the shutter speed but what happens is you wind the winder i shall demonstrate be easy this one so open the back of the camera and you can see there's the back of the camera so when you wind the winder to wind the film on not only is it winding the film on you see the shutter's being cocked do it again the shutter's being cocked. So, if I take it down to a really slow speed, you'll see it in action. Cock the shutter. Did you see how the blind works? Very difficult to see because it happens very fast. But what makes it fantastic is that you have a blind in the back of the camera so when you cock it it comes across to the side now remember with electronic cameras this is done electronically but with a very old mechanical camera it's all done by clockwork so then what happens is you press the shutter this blind comes across and then this blind follows it so if you've got a one second exposure what happens is this blind comes across and exactly one second later this blind follows it over so the whole negative gets the same amount of light. Now, how about if it's a 250th of a second? Well, this blind, after you've cocked it, it's gone back to the side, this blind will start to open, and then one 250th of a second later, this blind will follow it across. So as you can see, not the whole negative is getting exposed at the same time. So 250th of a second, so that opens and that follows it across. So what's happening is that you're getting a strip of light going across the negative. However, of course it's all equal by the time it gets to the other end. I just think that's fantastic. I really think that's clever. And that's been going on since the 1950s. Modern cameras, more modern cameras with the blind, it goes upwards. But it's exactly the same. Uh, cloth blinds and metal blinds. And I think some of the pentaxes, if you look in the back of there, you can quite clearly see that actually it's made up of thousands of little, hundreds of little blades that sort of skimmy up and then like a Venetian blind, and this one skimmies up behind it. I just think that's brilliant. Uh, you know, 
and it's all done in, in seconds. So as I say, with an old camera, mechanical camera, when you pull the, sh clock the shutter back, you're not just setting the, uh, the, the film wind on, you're actually cocking the co clockwork motor so that it can perform all the actions it needs to do. Open and shut the blind, pull the mirror up to the top, hold the mirror there. When the blind's completed, the mirror goes back down again, ready for the next picture. So, if you enjoyed my video, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like, because if you like it, then let other people know and they too can enjoy my videos. Uh, there's lots of other videos to look at, so why don't you have a look around, see what you see, if you're new here. Otherwise, if you're coming back, lovely to see you again. Thank you for the kind comments, and don't forget, got any questions about analog photography? Don't be afraid to ask. Brilliant. Have a lovely Christmas now, isn't it, nearly? Have a lovely time. I'll speak to you all next time I see you. Goodbye.